I know people are still coming in, but we're gonna get started. Um, I'm Kayla Kaufman Fuller, um, if any of you don't know that. Um, I'm the director of the festival. This is my second year running it. Um, and I just get surprised every single year about how many more people enter films, how many people show up to it. And even after um, asking guests to pay the $5 to just support this program, um, you still showed up. And we like to thank you for that. Um, so I'm here and I want to thank you, uh, thank the volunteers that are helping us right now. I know not all of them can hear me, but um, we wouldn't be able to do it without them. And also a lot of those volunteers were our screeners. We have a team of screeners that um, went through all of the films that were submitted and chose them for the festival. Um, so I'd like to thank them as well. And the last uh, thank you I'd like to uh, give is to Mia. Um, she's the assistant director, and she'll be <laughs> she'll be she'll be taking over next year if she officially accepts it. Don't worry, you're not you're not beholden to that. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, Devin as well. He was also on the team. He helped. <laughs> And um, before I give this, uh, before I give the mic to Brian, I'd like to thank him. But I've also uh, thank Brian. No one else is gonna do it. Um, but uh, I'd just like to um, tell you that those ballots that we gave you from the beginning, uh, we will be collecting those following the screening, but before the Q and A. So just keep in mind while you're watching, what was your favorite film? You can only choose one. So we'll let you know when we pick those up. And if you need pens, just ask one of our volunteers that'll be walking around. Okay, here's Brian. Hi, everyone. Um, just before they go off stage, we do want to give Kayla and Mia and Devin a little token of thanks for, they've been doing so much work. Yeah, and we thought we'd embarrass her. Kayla's like, I hate being on stage. You know, if you've ever put on an event with a couple hundred people, like a wedding or something, you know that there's like so many details that you wouldn't normally think of, and there's just a lot that goes into it. So thanks so much for your, for your work putting all that together. And a special thanks to Deb Zaccone, who, I, she's out there somewhere. She's been undying support for this event for years. This is our 11th annual. And she, her enthusiasm, not just for this event, but for all the events um, here at the college is really impressive. So thanks, Deb. So um, I just want to talk a little bit about the program just for a few minutes. This is uh, put on by the Digital Filmmaking Program. And if you've ever heard me talk, you know that I really love the JC. I'm really passionate about it. It's one of the reasons that I moved out here. Uh, the college is fantastic, just in general. Uh, I really believe in free education, and this is about as close as it gets in this country. Um, and when you compare the cost of what it goes, you know, what, what it costs to go here versus like a regular four year, it's pretty much free, it was like $1,000 a year. And um, I just want to make a pitch for if you're interested in film, if you're considering maybe going to a film school, uh, you're going to find that our program is pretty much right on par with what they do for like a, literally a fraction of the price. Um, we've got uh, amazing faculty here, including Mike Starkey, who's, who's here. We have amazing technology, high-end professional gear. Uh, and we've got maybe the most important thing, a really vibrant um, filmmaking community. Uh, and I've seen that grow over the years, and it's really fun to see. This event is an expression of that in, in a great way. But really, throughout the year, students are making films, and they're making connections, and they're being creative. And, and that's really what it's, what it's all about. So um, thanks for supporting our program. And if you're interested in taking uh, classes here, or maybe you're just interested in trying to, you know, you like stories, and you want to try to make stories, uh, check out our program. Um, it's called Digital Film, and it, you can find it on the um, communications page. If you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to myself uh, or Mike Starkey, who's in charge of the D digital media program uh, overall. 
Um, just a little bit about our festival tonight. Um, so this is the 11th annual festival and it's gotten increasingly competitive uh, in a good way. Um, we had 44 films uh, apply this year for 14 slots, which is pretty competitive for a, a regional student festival. So for the filmmakers who got into this, congratulations. The films were really good. Um, we put three films that are a little more violent at the end of the program. I don't really think they're that violent compared to television, if you look, ever watch TV, but some people um, are more sensitive about that than others, so we wanted to put them at the end. There'll be a PG-13 logo that comes up uh, after film 10, and if, if you want to excuse yourself at that point, or maybe you're with someone who's young, um, that can be your cue. At the very, at, after the screening, we'll have a Q&A where all the filmmakers will come up and um, We'll talk a little bit, just a QA. and a we'll talk a little bit about the film and their, you know, their film and their production. And uh, meanwhile, you all will be voting uh, for Best in Show. Um, after the Q&A, uh, we'll announce the, the three winning films, and those films will then take place in a larger international film festival that happens uh, the first Saturday of March, of May, excuse me, uh, May 4th. And that's an international festival. If you love film, which clearly you do, you should definitely check out this festival. It's amazing. We rent out the Mystic, and filmmakers from all over the world come and screen their films, many of which have played at the most prestigious festivals in the country and the world. Uh, many of the filmmakers are in attendance. We hold workshops the week leading up to the festival, and then the event is Saturday, May 4th. Uh, and our Three of tonight's films will get a chance to headline each one of the three programs that night, which is a really wonderful opportunity for those filmmakers to rub elbows with those professional filmmakers and also just to be showcased in a big theater downtown Petaluma. Uh, you can get more information online. Uh, and then after our Q&A, we'll go, everyone is uh, welcome to join us for a little mixer across, uh, uh, across the walkway there. Uh, where we, we'll have that for about an hour or two, and we have some um, food and drinks for people. Lastly, um, if you, uh, w well, we appreciate you just being here and supporting the program in that way. If you're able to uh, support us further, there's going to be a donation jar on your way out, uh, as well as swag like this black T-shirt or baseball hat or stickers. Uh, if you're able to support us that way, that's also great. Thanks again for being here, and uh, enjoy the show. Told you they were good. Uh, we'd like to invite the filmmakers to come up on stage now. We're gonna have people from the program walk around and collect your ballots, so you can take a look at your ballots right now. And uh, choose the film that was your favorite. We will tally them up during the Q&A. Maybe we can start by just, I'll pass the mic, and if you could introduce yourselves, uh, let us know which film you're affiliated with, what you did on the film, and then um, maybe uh, something about the film that you think uh, we might find interesting, dramatic, could be a challenge, a problem, something funny, or just about, about the film, where it came from, kind of anything that we want to say about the film. All right, Lori, we're going to put you on the stock. I know you love talking in public. 
Hi, I'm Lori Pelton. I worked on um, the film Us, um, and the writer, the director is down there. So I'm going to actually let her give yeah. more uh, of the information. James, yes, knock out James. Anyway, I was a producer and I did sound. I'm Josh Tamarini, and uh, I was on. I worked on Us as well. Uh, I was audio mainly, but yeah, we all kind of shared responsibility on everything. But yeah, I think it's best left to Alyssa to explain it. Hello, I'm uh, Yarin Avni. Um, I made The Other Side and Auditions for the King. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Brad Demarest. I'm one half of the writer and director um, for the stream. Um, I'm Peyton Cords, and I'm the other half of writer and director for the stream. I'm Chris Cam, and I'm the director and DP of The Other Half. I'm Zach Tracy. Uh, I acted in Resume and worked on the story, and then I uh, partnered with this guy, and we did the Gravin Scene Gone. I'm Steve Foley. Um, Gravin Scene Gone was for a journalism class. Wasn't really supposed to be uh, in a contest like this, so it happened kind of by accident but it's fun to be here, thanks. Uh, my name is Gabriel Crowley. Uh, I'm the writer and director of The Affair, and I made it in the, <laughs> in the Media 20 class here at SRJC. I'm Russell Purcell, and I did the sound for and edited The Affair. I'm Melissa Holiday, and I'm the um, writer and director and editor of Us, which I changed to James because a movie recently came out called Us, so. Hi, I'm Candace Penland, and I am a co-director and producer on Auditions for the King. Hi, my name is Neil Wagner, and I wrote and directed Reflection along with uh, co-directed Happy Birthday and wrote Happy Birthday. Hi, my name is Grant Anderson, and uh, I co-directed Happy Birthday. My name is Andy Huey, and I wrote and directed Pepper, and even though we had a semester to make that film. We shot it in a day due to procrastination. Hi, I'm Kane Parsons, and I wrote, edited, and directed, and played the main lead role of Late for School. I'm Robert Cathcart, student number four. <laughs> I'm Andrew Berger, student number three. I'm Garrett Christie, and I'm student number two. Hi, I'm Roberta McIntyre. I want to do a shout out real quick to the Santa Rosa Junior College digital, digital Film Program. Thank you, Brian Anselson, and your cohorts for a wonderful project. Program. I went through the Digital Film Program um, along with some of my former students I see here today as well. And if it wasn't for that program, I would not have been able to craft or produce the short you saw called Firestorm. Um, it's meant to be a feature film, and one of the things I am learning as I go through learning to be a filmmaker is how important thing resources are and how much resources cost to create a project. So our hope with Firestorm is that we can use that as a springboard to get into some festivals, do well, and hopefully from that generate some funding to finish the project in its entirety. Hope you enjoyed it, and I, that's all I'm gonna say for now. Um, my name is Sophie Martinez, and I made a script to screen. And I wanna do a shout out to my family who I forced to be in this film a weekend before the festival was due. <laughs> I'm uh, Devin Lair, I'm student number five. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> um, I'm the writer and director of Auditions for the King. And yeah, I'm something, go ahead, you can clap if you want. Um, something that was uh, cool about that is the reaction we got from people. Um, people didn't know that it was completely fake for a while after watching, so um, one person even wrote a, saying that they thought it was a, a kind of a gay love story, which I thought was interesting. Uh, but 
Yeah, that was something interesting. Just a, just a quick uh, show of hands from our filmmakers. Um, how many had a significant amount of improvisation in their script with their actors on set? Raise your hand if you had a lot of improvisation. Okay, just curious. And how many, how many people had um, some amount of visual effects in post? <laughs> okay, no, just curious. Um, is Kane Parsons here? Okay, I missed you, Kane. Awesome. What grade are you in? Incredible. Incredible. Kane, do you mind if I put you on the spot as the youngest person on the stage? To... Cool. Is there a mic down there? Is there a mic down there? Can you walk us through your film? It's so impressive in terms of the, there's just a lot in it. Um, I'm uh, thinking specifically of the effects, but the music mix is great in it. There's a lot of tension. Uh, there's just a lot going on there. Uh, yeah, I didn't really, it took me a little while to come up with, I had a whole bunch of little ideas before the festival, but I was running out of time and I just sort of picked one and went with it. And I had to film the whole thing during uh, the fifth periods at my school for just, I only had like four days to film it because um, I was quite pressed for time. And it was raining for a lot of the days, so I had to, it started raining, then I would have to go under the overhang, then wait for it to stop. And so it was fairly difficult to get it all done. Um, so, that was the, we had to cut out a little bit here and there, but that was the onset production. It what was, was the, you've got so many effects going on in there. How, how long did that take you? Was that it, the bulk of your time spent Yeah, that on was the project? most of my time. It took all, if you only counted the editing time, it would probably take about 15 hours, maybe. I used um, the Element 3D plugin for Adobe After Effects, and that's what really did all the, 3D visuals, yeah. Great, nice work, nice Thank work. You. Um, Yadin, um, the other side is the story with the, um, the uh, telephone booth. Can you talk a little bit about your inspiration on that and then a little bit about the phone booth? I know a little bit about it and I think it's interesting. I'll pass you this mic. Um, so, my dad passed away in 2004, and shortly after he passed away, I had that urge that I have to, you know, I, wa I want to call him. I want to pick up the phone and call him, but it, I couldn't explain it because I knew that he's gone, but I still had that urge, and time passed, and I dealt with, with, with my dad's death, and then a few years ago, I heard that story on uh, This American Life, uh, and it was about um, a Japanese men that built a phone booth uh, after the big tsunamis they had in 2011. Uh, thousands of people died and thousands of people were missing and he built that phone booth and people from all over Japan came to that phone booth to connect to their loved ones that they lost and, and that kind of like inspired me to, when I went, when I took the Media 20, you asked to do something personal. And I had two scripts, and this one was the personal. So I, I went with that, and yeah, it just it came from there. And for me, it was a journey to to deal with my own grief and and, and imagination, and how Im imagination can ins inspire us to go through difficulties and. Yeah, I built that bu phone booth, yeah. So you built it, and you shot yourself building it, and then you had it on the side of the road, and just, just show the audience. Ah, yeah, uh, we were shooting, at the and, the, and the, uh, the neighbor was driving when we, were, when we did one of the, the scenes, and, and she was like, what are you doing? And then, like, she was all scared, and she thought it was like a security booth of the neighbors or something. Right. She didn't understand what it is, and uh, we were, like, explaining her what we're 
doing, and she was, oh my God, it's so great, and she, she asked, asked us to leave that phone booth so she can call her um, parents. And I think till this day, she comes there maybe once a week, maybe, I don't know, maybe every night. I look, and she, she's still using it, but she's calling her parents and talking to them, and hopefully some other people from the area come there and talk to their loved ones. And you all invited, it's on Taylor Lane, Occidental. <laughs> Uh, I can I can send you there after if you want you can talk to me. Uh, yeah. yeah, he told that story in class, and I was like, "Did you shoot it?" He was like, "Oh no." I was like, "Oh, you should roll on that." Did you? you oh, I didn't see that. That's good stuff. That's an interesting mixture of, of art and art and life. Um, Grant and Neo, you guys have been here before. Yeah. Yeah. You're, um, do you have a mic? Let's get a mic over there to them. Hello. <laughs> so you, you guys are very prolific. Do you want to talk a little bit about your, your team? You, are you uh, constantly writing? Are you working on stuff? Is it mostly for class assignments or... Is it more passion thing that you guys are always working on? I'm also curious about your logo. It's very, got this cool 80s thing to it, and I'm just curious about where that comes from, what that's inspired by. Okay, um, well, for us personally, we kind of twist even our class assignments into being <laughs> like personal films and like things that we could be as proud of as we would be if we were making an opera class. I don't know. <laughs> um, as far as like creating the film, um, yeah, this was a passion project that we both had. It wasn't specifically for a class assignment, although we did turn in for class credit. But uh, our goal on it was to make the audience uncomfortable, not squeamish or not scared, or but just uncomfortable. And uh, I was pretty happy with it. Also, the logo, I just, I thought it was cool. It, it's been like that for like years now. I know, I, re I remember it every time it comes up. It, it, it's very, it's got that 80s feel to it. I, Thank you. I, I like it. Peyton and Brad. Such a violent film from two nice filmmakers. Do you want to talk a little bit about your film, where it came from, or maybe what it means, or what it's inspired by? So... I think for us, we wanted to try and make a, this was kind of an experiment for us because I love horror, Peyton loves horror, um, and we wanted to try and make like a little contained horror experience without dialogue, only just, you know, just visuals, music. Um, and we wanted to see what we could do with like no budget. Like we tried to make the most professional looking thing we could possibly make. And we also wanted it to be intriguing without being like heavy handed on what the story was. I wanted people to think about it, you know, maybe watch it a couple times to try and figure out what it's about. Um, and as for the violence, I just, I don't know, I thought it was fun <laughs> to see a, yeah. <laughs> I thought the hammer murder was kind of just a fun thing to watch for some reason. And it was fun to film. Um, when we shot it, our lovely serial killer, Seamus, um, he had to wear this gas mask the whole time, and he just could not breathe, and he powered through it, and he delivered a really good little horror antagonist, and I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, um, in one of the shots, you could actually see the gas mask moving in and out because he was breathing so hard because there was just no oxygen coming in or out. So thanks, Seamus. Um, I feel like this film, for me at least, I, I think all of us, who worked on it kind of got a different interpretation for what it meant, but I thought it kind of was a representation of personal hell or, or a purgatory, kind of. Um, working towards something and then, you know, never actually getting the reward of the success that you want, so. Which is terrifying, so. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Chris Cam, is Chris here? Yeah, Chris, um, can you talk a little bit about your film, maybe where that came from? Um, I also really liked the um, impressive tracking shot in the opening, uh, where he's on the skateboard and then transitions on the bridge. It's really well set up and executed. Um, can you talk a little bit about your film, Inspiration? 
Yeah, so the inspiration for the other half came from just being a teen, noticing that a lot, like a huge problem with us teens is that we're always like on our phones and stuff. And with the other half, I just wanted to make like a statement about how like people are missing out in life. And um, yeah, that was it. And then what else was there? Oh yeah, the tracking. What else is there? Yeah, so it was up at my grandparents' house in Healdsburg and I had my mom in a minivan with the gate open and I uh, walked backwards with a gimbal and then sat in the back of the minivan and she drove away. So, yeah. So you, you, were, you were walking backwards and then you sat in, in the car and then the car took off. Yeah, I was walking backwards, skateboarder, and then I sat down and I had someone in the car to grab me to make sure I like wouldn't fall and then we drove away down the street. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, Sophie, you want to talk about your film? Um, you're working with your sister? Yes. Are, are you both still on speaking terms? <laughs> yeah. Okay. She's right over there. Do you want to talk about where that film came from? Um, it came from us not knowing what to film for this film festival. <laughs> it's kind of meta. You're breaking the fourth wall again. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, how long yeah. did it take you? Did you spend? It seems like you spent a lot of time uh, in post production. One of the things that I liked about your film is it's very, the pacing is just right. It really, even right from the very start, the credits, music, you cut the music off, and the people at the audio board jumped because they thought there was a mistake, and it's part of the film. It's really well, and you kind of have that pacing throughout the film, which I really appreciated. Did you do more work in editing versus production, or? Um, yeah, we filmed for about uh, two days, I think, total, and then I edited the rest of the time. I really just wanted it to feel like they were just imagining it, so you would jump straight into the scene, and then once they decided it was a terrible idea, just jump straight back out. But, yeah. Who was editing m more? Was it a joint effort? That was you and your sister editing it together? Or? Oh, I edited the whole thing. Um, my sister, I just asked her to be in it because I... Uh, she was home for break, so, yeah. <laughs> Just pulled her in. Yes. It's really hard to know when you're talking about pacing, like how long to keep a shot up. Sometimes you want the shot to be up for a long time, and, and, but oftentimes people leave shots up for too long, I think. And it, but getting that down, and I, I felt like you got that really well in your film, so nice work. Thank you. Yeah. I got a good reaction from the crowd, too, big laughs. Roberta, do you want to talk a little bit about, about your your film? And um, I'm curious, some of the footage that you acquired in that is really, I mean, it's it's horrific, but it's also beautiful and, and amazing footage. Yeah, about the footage, um, we're still looking for more footage to do the feature length version of that. Um, so if you guys have any, reach out to me, either through Brian or uh, in the mixer afterwards. Um, I'd be happy to, to work out an arrangement with you to get more footage. Um, for the, the Ultimately, we want to make a short feature, 55 minute feature out of it, and we're uh, predicting we'll get a good distribution deal and get it on PBS and, and that sort of platform or that market. Um, so um, the, the, the idea for the film, I'm a retired firefighter, fire marshal from the county of Sonoma. And after I retired for about two weeks, I didn't know what to do with my life. So I thought, well, why not go jump into college again with all these wonderful young people and learn from them? And so I went to the digital film program at the junior college, fell in love with filmmaking. And then in the course of all that, I also went through the, um, the multimedia uh, journalism program. And a shout out to Ann Belden, who's here uh, from the journalism program, thank you. Uh, and so anyway, so the, the idea for the film came from, I was in the journalism program and the fires happened and I got a little frustrated with some of the things that were going on during the fires. And so I wanted to do a film about that. So I collaborated with some folks and we dove into it. We collected footage, um, went out, we shot actually 
Um, 26 interviews, 28 people, a couple interviews were a pair. And um, of those, you know, 28 people that we interviewed, you got to see four of them that are relatively good cross-section of all of the folks that we interviewed for the project. We interviewed firefighters, um, we interviewed subject matter experts, we interviewed people who were involved in, you know, just regular citizens doing the best they could, um, as well as victims. And, you know, we have a lot of material to work with and we hope to finish it. Um, but it was, it's a kind of a passion project for me. Um, being a retired firefighter, and I was able to use my skills as a firefighter married to what I learned from the junior college film program to craft what you saw today. Um, so that's kind of where the from here to there. Yeah, great job. It's hard to watch it because it, it brings back so many memories, but you did a great job collecting all that, and I'm sure your connections uh, has been really helpful as well. So nice work on that. Thank you. Uh, Devin and Candace, um, you want to talk a little bit about um, auditions for the King? It feels like there's a lot of improv in that. Is that fair to say, or was it mostly scripted? <laughs> yes. Wait, what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> you can talk about whatever you want. I'm just curious about, um, I'm always curious about how the script changes when you get into production. You want to talk about where you started versus where you ended up? Um, yeah, so I started writing the script and I did it in more of a documentary format. So it was AV, so audio visual, because um, I wanted to make it more of a mockumentary. And uh, that's where it started. And then, um, yeah, that's kind of where, where it ended up. I showed Candace and then I showed Yurene and then I said, do you want to make this with me? And they're like, yeah. And I was, didn't really care about titles or credit or anything like that. I just wanted to make it a film because I hadn't in a while, which this program definitely helps you do, which is make films. Um, it's very hard once you get out of this program. Um, so, yeah. Do you have anything? What was it like directing your mom? Oh, right. So, um, uh, my mom was in this. And she showed up after work, and I didn't think she would come because she was like, "No, I'm not. I'm not doing this." And uh, but she showed up, and I directed her, and she was actually pretty good. Never acted before, so um, yeah, it's definitely like what Devin was saying. Once you get out of the program, it's harder to get momentum going on projects, but it's definitely important to get that community together and just keep making stuff because. You can stagnate, so don't stagnate. Great, thank you. Uh, Gabriel, the affair. Hi. I remember when you pitched this in class and everyone sort of looked at you like, gnomes? <laughs> and it made a lots of changes over the writing and then the shooting, and then the editing, you were modifying. Where did the idea come from, and how did it change? And um, like, uh, maybe what were some of the challenges of it, or anything interesting you want to say about it? Yeah, um, yeah, so, <laughs> where did the idea come from? <laughs> uh, I was kind of just like struggling to come up with ideas, uh, and I was just kind of looking around my room, um, I mean, <laughs> I know it sounds kind of weird, but uh, my friend uh, gave me like little miniatures for Dungeons and Dragons that were like gnomes, and I just looked at them and I'm like, oh, maybe there's something here. Uh, and then I remembered um, for uh, my friend's Media 10 class, uh, I acted in a film where uh, I was trying to hide like my blow up doll uh, when someone came home. Uh, <laughs> and so I, uh, I kind of combined those ideas in a way. Um, yeah. So that, that's kind of how it came, the idea came to be. Uh, and then as far as how it developed, um, I kind of, I just had a lot of help from like friends and then, you know, suggestions in class. Uh, and I think that's one of the best things about the, uh, the program here is that it gives you a lot of resources. Uh, 
and then it gives you deadlines, so you actually finish it, uh, you know, even if you don't think it's ready. So that, that was really helpful for me. Yeah, nice work. And I remember you had a lot of location changes and casting changes. I think it start did it start as a heterosexual couple initially, and then you had two male actors. So you're like, all right. Yeah, uh, I was just like, we were gonna look for actors, and then I'm just like, I'll just use friends of mine, and so uh, it just became a gay couple. And then, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Nice work. Uh, we can pass the mic over to Steven Zach. Grabbing scene gone. And also, Zach, you're, you're here for, now is it resume or resume? It's definitely resume. Because oh. I thought, like, is he auditioning girlfriends? Why is it resume? I'm not, wasn't following. Are we, we're going to talk about that one first? Sure. All right. Um, it's resume. It's kind of like a, you know, it's a story of loss, you know? Uh, somebody that you love dies and kind of everything fades away and you kind of sink into that, you know, I don't know. Uh, Having dealt with that personally before, definitely feel it, you know? I, probably everybody knows what that's kind of like. You kind of, yeah, everything around you just kind of stops and you just keep going back to that one thing. So, so that's kind of a representation of that. If it was resume, it might be a little bit happier. <laughs> yeah. Now to the apples. <laughs> He's hiding. Steve, what do you want to say about the apples? Well, uh, John, the old farmer, is my next door neighbor. And we were looking for a story uh, for journalism class. Zach and I were partners, couldn't decide. And I talked to John down at the mailbox. And he said he, he manages like uh, 30 apple orchards, small ones. And he was lamenting the fact that he lost three that week to uh, people that want to grow marijuana. So first the grapes were taken away, the apples, and now marijuana is. Um, I came to uh, the junior college to learn about digital assets. I'd worked in film years ago, did some really uh, big movies, but we cut on film. And I wanted to learn. I took Mike Starkey's class and Brian's class. And I just want to say these guys have it going on. They, they really do. You, uh, you know, my wife, my wife uh, who's here with me tonight, she, you know, she's in the unions uh, uh, as a hairdresser, and we met on a movie, and we, we, you know, did real movies. But I needed to learn, and I came here, and it was, these guys have it going on, so I'm, Glad to be here, and thanks, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Andy? Where's Andy at? <laughs> Andy, you're a familiar face here as well. Very prolific. Thank you. Do you, uh, I'll ask you the same question that I ask your colleagues. Do you do a lot of uh, film work? Is that like your fun time? Do you? Are you making films mostly just for class projects? Or are you doing it um, as something fun to do on summers and weekends and things? Or where does it come from? Because you've, you've been making a lot of films. Well, I actually graduated from Santa Rosa High School last year. And I'm in a gap year. I'm kind of in between schools right now. But I found it's a lot more difficult um, not being in a film class to make films as far as like, like Pepper came from a, a deadline, like most films of mine where we had like a long chunk of time to work on it and then there's a deadline so you have to make something, which like I think um, is frustrating in the time being, but overall is something I'm grateful for because it really pushes you more. But um, if you're looking for a film program, they have a good one at the JC. You can yeah, next year. <laughs> Apparently. Not a deadline. I'll be there. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Um, yeah, Pepper was a lot of fun to work with, to work on. It was a different type of film for me. I tried a bunch of different new things. It was the first film of mine that was, um, that was sad. I've never done a sad film. And it was also the first time I've done any dialogue in my films at all. I've always, like, strayed away from dialogue. I found it's often just chit-chat, but I tried experimenting with that in this film, which was a lot of fun. And also both of the actors were my cousins, and I think they did a very good job. 
Yeah, nice. Nice job. Could I ask Neil again? I meant to ask you before when you had the microphone. Um, reflection, where did that come from? Because it's a, it's a really interesting idea, and it's not a film that I would think would come from a younger person. Um, um, it's got a really you know, mature perspective in thank terms you. of the storytelling. Thank you. Um, man, I, I had the concept for a long time, which is no, just as simple as someone looking into their past. Um, but I didn't want to do it in a way that would come off as corny. I wanted to be authentic. And I would like to actually shout out Nancy right now, who is my main actress, who is wonderful. <laughs> oh, she's over there. But. Um, man, yeah, I, what really the film for me was, I'm, I'm always trying new things, because I think that's really important. And f for me, for this one, this was one where I didn't specifically try anything new, and I really just took what I learned and applied it, which I think turned out something that I was really happy with. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Alyssa, you want to talk about your film? Yeah. Us slash James? Yes. I didn't know that you changed it because of us. That's pretty funny. It's OK. I emailed you guys, but I guess you guys didn't get it. So cool. It's cool. I, I didn't get your email, but I got your film, and I was downloading and I was like, why does it say James? Because another movie came out, and it was just bad timing. I don't want to talk about it. Or good timing <laughs> for marketing. People are like, I, oh, yeah, it's us. Yeah. Put it on Netflix. <laughs> um, so it was a class project, and Brian has claimed I'm a bit ambitious, so I actually went back and I made it shorter than what it was. I took a couple scenes out. Um, I think Josh, Lori, Jose, and I shot it in like a day and a half, and then I edited it in like two days. Um, my fiance over there played the creepy stalker boyfriend. <laughs> he's really good at roles like that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Not that he's creepy in person. Um, no, it's just, who doesn't like a thriller or like a stalker type of film? That's always like, you know, the anticipation and it's just that those are kind of like my favorite type of films. And instead of the nice guy finishing last, the nice guy just ends up being psycho. So that's kind of where I went with it there. Um, and there was a deadline and I met it and it was just really fun. And I had a really good group, a really good group. Brian like gave me the best people possible to work with. So thanks for that. Yeah, you, you had um, really good also pacing in your film. The, the editing uh, is really tight, and especially in the moments where you're building tension. You have a lot of rapid cuts and different devices that are really strong in terms of making you feel uncomfortable. The talent. Is there any film that we didn't hear from? I don't I want to make sure we get to everyone. OK. We have just like five minutes if we want to do a couple questions. We don't have a lot of time. We want to wrap it up in just five minutes. But any questions from the audience that you want to field to any of the filmmakers, we can take one of these mics and send it out to whoever. Just raise your hand. There's Spencer. Hi. Uh, I had a question for the team uh, for Happy Birthday. I was really wondering what like the inspiration for the final shot was. So it really struck me. Um, and I don't know if it was maybe in reference to something or if it was just something you guys thought of on the day. I would really love to hear like, the thought process that you know, inspired that. So there's actually an alternate ending, which is the first one we shot and wrote. And after watching it, it, didn't, it was good, but it didn't strike really the emotional weight that we wanted it to. But yes, it does mean something. Um, everything in the film means something and uh, the ending shot it's sort of uh, poetic in the sense that when he goes and visits his dad and is disrespectful he ends up in the same exact place with his friends disrespectful to him by just leaving him alone sitting there um, but yeah you don't want to say anything about it Let the shot speak for itself. I like that. Yeah. Another question. Uh, hi, my name is Lariva, and this is a question for Kane for Late for School. And I was, I thought that that was so amazing. 
it was totally surreal, and I was just wondering, did you have a lot of experience with the special effects that you use on that program, or how did you come up with those special effects? I've had about a little over a year of experience with After Effects, and I, it's not, I use a lot of plugins, uh, lens flares, 3D programs, and then I all just sort of mix them together. Um, I learned a lot of it from uh, YouTube and just watching tutorials online. And I, that, yeah. Thank you. And we'll take, uh, we'll take one more question from the audience. One more question. Hi, this question is for Yoreen. Um, the, on the other side, I really um, appreciated how you used editing as a really powerful way to tell the story with split screen and different um, angles and such. So I was wondering if you could just talk about um, how you came up with your editing style as a major part of storytelling. the TV show, oh. Fargo, mm -hmm. so the second season, I don't know if anyone watched it, is, is amazing, and it's, uh, that's where I got the inspiration, because over there they were tel telling the story in split screens, and it has a special rhythm to it, and I love the aesthetics of, um, of that, and I, and I decided, and, and the thing is that I had so much footage, and, and Brian was saying, you gotta cut it, you gotta cut it, it's gotta be fast, and, and for me, it was a way to be stylistic and to be a little bit kind of like retro 80s, kind of split, you know, old video style, and to get as much, uh, as much more information in, you know, in a short film. Yeah. Okay, thank you. If you can all stay up here while we announce the awards. Sorry, no more questions, sorry. You can ask them afterwards. Um, so we're gonna have two awards tonight. The first ones I'm gonna announce are the Audience Choice Awards, and the second ones are the Director's Choice Awards. The Director's Choice Awards will get the opportunity to um, screen their films in the Film Fest Petaluma uh, May 4th. Okay, so Audience Choice Awards first. We actually have four. We were meant to have three, but there was a tie. So it's gonna be Happy Birthday. <laughs> The Stream, Other Side, and Script to Screen. All right, congratulations. And the three Director's Choice Awards that will be screening in the three lineups of the Film Fest Petaluma on May the 4th will be Auditions for the King, Script to Screen, and Happy Birthday. Congratulations to all of our filmmakers. Excellent work, everyone. We invite you to come uh, hang out with us. Uh, we'll be across the way. There, we've got a little mixer. We have food and beverages over there. On your way out, uh, there's a donation basket if you're able to donate. And we've got swag outside. Thanks for supporting the digital filmmaking program. See you next year, if not before then.